Tallahassee is too far away. You know, there was a movement to move it down to Orlando. There's a plaque on the building that says, <laughs> thanks to Representative so-and-so, Senator so-and-so for, for uh, uh, his bill to move it to Orlando, which inspired the city of Tallahassee to pay for this building. <laughs> I'm going to be a glass half full person right now and mention to you that not in every state do you find, in fact, it's, it's, it's a rarity. Florida is really a shining star here that the Medicaid program will fund assisted living level of care. You go to a place like New York, which has the most liberal Medicaid program in the country, and they only have a pilot program and a handful of facilities around the entire state, like five facilities in the downstate area, and only partially funded, so there's only a certain number of beds in those facilities, a very little known program in New York to pay that level of care. So while Florida's behind the eight ball on the- I mean, you have the old days, they, 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 you have these grant programs where they dump money in and then the state can do with it as they wish. There are these waiver programs. Well, your long-term care diversion is a waiver program, so you have, have certain requirements because uh, the Center for Medicare, Medicaid uh, services uh, will approve it or not approve it. And, you know, they had a, uh, they just had a check going in that uh, the Bush administration would help the Bush administration put through um, restrictions and, and things that, that didn't work, that had, uh, that really helped the insurance industry. Um, and so, so basically, I think that we can, add, if we're vocal, and Yolanda was speaking in the last session about, uh, about the fact that everybody's got to be on board with contacting legislators. Uh, they don't know. I mean, I'm a voice and I actually learned that I got awards and stuff, that I was uh, something dangerous going on that was got to be stopped and I'm going to ask you all to be aware of it. Um, there's a program in Broward County called Medicaid Reform. It is horrible. I mean, it is just, uh, they are basically uh, HMOs that are taking a huge percentage of administrative costs. They are not, they, they, they're changing things terribly, but it doesn't affect seniors because the seniors were caught out in 2006, 2005, 2006. The seniors, they want to put the seniors back in Medicaid Reform in a program called Senior Care. I've been fighting that uh, for the last two years. They have it on hold right now, and in, in this little uh, brochure that I have of, of the stuff that happened last year, uh, I held a workshop on Medicaid reform because I was afraid that if Medicaid reform is successful, number one, they're going to dump the diversion program and put everybody in senior care. See, that, that, was, that was really the scary part for me, so, oh, for us. So I wanted to kill Medicaid reform even though it didn't affect seniors because, and, and, and we true that, uh, and there's also this workshop which is just a matter of being loud and calling and being a pain in the ass, not just one email, not just, uh, you know, it, it makes a difference. Yes? Um, my freshman legislative funding the programs and the safety net for them is a quality of life issue. It's not just something nice to do, it is the right thing to do. I, I get irritated because to me, cutting back in the health care of a senior who has been invited to come and move to Florida, who have been living here well, but when they need access, those programs are closed off, is wrong. It, it's, it's like a bait and switch almost. Um, and it's almost like, you know, I, I have a friend in Jacksonville that gets so mad, she says, it's are going to Tallahassee to get briefed on how to be a legislator. And so uh, there are five topics, the five most important topics on, on their afternoon agenda. Education was number one, um, property taxes is two, insurance is three, health care is four, and I forget what the fifth, but I was outraged that health care was four. Because when you get sick, nothing else matters. You will get rid of your house, you will do whatever it takes to get well again. And when a senior gets sick, it's not that they get sick and they get better. They get sick and then it's something else. It is the beginning of a process when a senior gets sick. And um, for all those families that are out there struggling and they don't know where to turn, I think it um, has gone to a tipping point in the state of Florida where healthcare and seniors and appropriately funding the programs and the safety net for them is a quality of life issue. It's not just something nice to do. It is the right thing to do. I, I get irritated because to me, cutting back in the health care of a senior who has been invited to come and move to Florida, who have been living here well, but when they need access, those programs are closed off, is wrong.
it, it's it's like a bait and switch almost. Um, and it's almost like, you know, I, I have a friend in Jacksonville that gets so mad. She says, it's, I should ask legislators, well, why don't we just get rid of the junior and senior year in high school? And that's what you're doing to our seniors by cutting our funding. You're not allowing them to optimally grow older in the state. And, you know, um, it, it's going to take all of us to be as far up as people were about the need for change at the national level. And I was very concerned many years ago about the amount of apathy in that it's somebody else's problem and it'll go away, it'll be fine, it, it, we always get through these, but we're not going to get better. We're going to get worse before we get better, but we can at least try to influence um, the types of decisions that are made by being vocal about it. Get mad as hell and tell your legislators about it and make sure your families do the same thing. Uh, Medicaid reform was a way of getting these $16 billion that comes from the federal government for Medicaid, it, you know, under 60. Okay. And, uh, and to get that into HMOs, so that HMOs would uh, administer it, and the ones that are administering it in the, uh, in the mental, mental department, that section, are taking 38% in their administrative course. And the law is that they can't take more than 20%. So they don't give it to you. I mean, they're actually just taking more than they should. That program is a failure. We've been pointing it out constantly. I mean, I do not stop. There's not a week that I don't do something to try to stop this. It's a group uh, uh, from Florida Chain is here. Yeah, we, we, we just asked, went, to just went a, to that one. Um, where they spoke on it. Um, yeah. Good Hugh. From Ch I don't remember okay. if saying Linda maybe Goodhue yeah, and Chain exactly. and then they told us I thought it was like a pilot program only in five well it is a pilot it's a pilot in Duval Broward and then three little counties up near uh, Duval County which is Jacksonville uh, and we're very very fortunate because Jacksonville has a foundation that did studies on it and and, and engaged and the George Dent Institute on it and 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 then Frida came to book the workshop didn't you the one that we had in Hollywood last mm -hmm. December where uh, we actually put a stop to the expansion, it was supposed to be expanded in 2010. That is not a good program. People are being lost in the program. Their choice counseling is terrible. I mean, it's not good. But it's not seniors. So when they were called that seniors, what they want to do is to take the seniors and every single Medicaid kind of program or any kind of government program has to go through an HMI. So they'll be just, it, it will be filtered through HMOs that will take off the, uh, the, the, the slices, of the, the huge slices of the pie for themselves. Well care would be a bundle on okay, Medicaid. So, so what you're talking about is moving Medicare people from Medicare to the private sector, HMO, Medicare? Yeah, Medicaid, 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 there'll be Medicaid HMOs that you have fifth choice of priority. They don't take it. They don't take it. Absolutely right. That's right. another That's issue. It's it was so unconscionable for the state of Florida to even be considering an expansion of a program that has failed. Right. Already. We're fighting. I, I, it's like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it takes people to say, this isn't right, and we're going to sign up. Because mm -hmm. if we're silent, things get done, and then it's too late to do anything about it. Who's taking the money? Can't we send uh, emails to those people? Okay, well, uh, Laura, Laura Goodhue and, a and Chain mm -hmm. has a, 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 an email list of 6,000 people who they're always, and they're doing a wonderful job of exposing it. I keep doing it on the legislative level. I will not have to hundreds of, of these studies of how bad it was. I went to every legislature. I was exhausted just giving them all out talking to staff, telling them how bad they don't want to listen because it's a Bush program. The, it is a program to help the insurance and HMO industry that, uh, of their friends. The diversion program is good. It's run by HMOs, but it's been tweaked. Those people are doing a decent job. So there's nothing wrong, you know, endemically about uh, HMOs in managed care, but it is when they're people, it does leave the door open for a lot of uh, uh, misuse. So that's the thing we're very afraid of that seeing, you know, getting in touch with the AIDS and being a pain in the ass with the AIDS is good too because you make sure you, you tell the legislators because they really should be doing it. But being one shot doesn't do it. One email doesn't do it. Ten emails doesn't do it. You gotta keep going. Well, yeah. when, you, when I bring to my representative uh, an issue, it is resolved on the micro level regardless of whether I ask the question, am I the only person bringing this to your attention? Is there not a cumulative effect? Do you not see a systemic issue 
usually it's a DCF Medicaid problem of one kind or another. Yeah. And they don't want to address that. She doesn't want to address that. She she helps my person out. My person goes merrily on his or her way. I cannot possibly be the only person bringing such things. Absolutely to right. And that's why what, what, what you can do is to send the same issue and choose legislators who you do it. Now, let me tell you. Times, the magazine section, there is an article about what went wrong over the last eight years, and I'm not trying to take party lines here and no, tell you I how I vote, <laughs> but that was sort of the angle of the article, and the essence of it, the main point of the article, was Congress's failure to act as a check and a balance on the presidential powers that were being exercised by President Bush, and the reason cited for that was this sense that when you vote as a member of Congress, there is now an expectation that if you are a Republican, you will support your party first Absolutely. and your constituency comes second. And because of the flip, because it actually used to be the other way, that's where we went wrong and got off track. And so many people, so many people in Congress are so afraid to cross lines and do something and pull like a Joe Lieberman that um, we end up losing the checks and the balances and then you, the, the whole, if you think about it from 230 some odd years ago, the founders of our country saying, we need to have these three branches of government that check and balance each other. And when one leg becomes weak and one becomes stronger, you exactly. lose, we all lose.